Hello, in this video, I'll explain to you the recording process using the debit and credit procedure. First, we start with the steps in the recording process. The first step in the recording process is to analyze each transaction, which means to provide evidence of the transaction. Once we're having the evidence, we have to show the impact of each transaction on different accounts using the debit and credit procedures. The third step we're having is to transfer journal information to ledger accounts, and it means to have a balance for each account, whether it's debit or credit. In order to better understand the debit and credit procedures, we first define account, which is a record of increases and decreases in a specific asset, liability, equity, revenue, or expense item. And the accounting system, it's a double entry system, which means each transaction must affect two or more accounts to keep the basic accounting equation in balance. So at the end, we will have debits equal credits. In order to illustrate the procedure, we have to see different transactions. The first transaction we're having here, it's investing cash in business. What's happening here, we're having a cash that enters the company. And since it enters the company, it means it's debit. And since it's a double entry system, it means the company has to provide something in return. So the company will provide ownership. And this ownership, and since it's providing it, it's a credit. The second transaction we're having, it's buying land for cash. The land is entering the company and the land, it's an asset account. So since it's entering the company, it's debit. In return, the company will pay cash. It means cash, it's going out of the company. So cash, it's credit. From these two examples, we can see that the asset accounts, they increase with debit, and they decrease with credit. This is why we say the normal balance of an asset, it's debit. The third transaction we're having, it's buying equipment on account. The equipment is entering the company, so it's debit. In return, the company is giving a promise that it will pay the invoice in future date. So this is a credit. And here it's an accounts payable, which is part of liabilities. So the normal balance of a liability, it's a credit. It means the liability increase with credit. Another example we're having here is the company paying electricity invoice. The company is consuming electricity. So electricity is entering the company. This is why it's debit. And electricity, it's part of utilities and it's part of expense. So the normal balance of an expense, it's debit. It means it increases with debit. In return, the company is paying cash. So it is credit. The final transaction we're having, it's selling goods for cash. The company here is providing goods. And since it's providing, it means it's credit. And since it's providing also, it means it's earning revenue. So the normal balance of revenue, it's a credit. In return, what they are giving us, it's cash. So the cash is increasing, so it's debit. In order to summarize all these transactions, we're having this table. The normal balance of an asset, it's debit. And the normal balance of an expense, it's also debit. The normal balance of liability, equity, and revenue, it's credit. So they increase based on this debit and credit. However, in the opposite side, they will decrease. Like this, you're having a summary of all the accounts and how debit and credit can affect them. Finally, we're having the T account. On the T account, we will have the balance of each account. So we're having on the top, the account name. On the left, debit, and on the right, credit. 
and we can have two options. The first option where credit exceeds debit, so the balance will be on the credit side. The second option, the debit exceeds credit, so the balance will be on the debit side. Like this, we covered the whole debit and credit procedure. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.